All right, this is a heat transfer problem, and we are working with a silicone chip right here. We know the surface area of it is 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters. We know that on one side it's insulated, and on the other it's cooled by an, an airflow, which is parallel to the chip. We know that the velocity of the air is 20 meters per second, and the temperature of the air is 24 degrees Celsius. Now they also tell us that when the chip is in use, there is an electrical power dissipation within the chip that maintains a uniform heat flux at the cooled surface right here. So this is important for us to remember, uniform heat flux. Now they also tell us that on the surface of this chip, the temperature cannot exceed 80 degrees Celsius at any location, doesn't matter what a uh, point at the beginning and middle whatever nev nowhere can exceed 80 degrees celsius now they want us to find the maximum allowed power that can be in this chip in two scenarios he uh, the first one here where the chip is just by itself and the second one when the chip is flush mounted in a substrate and this will uh, give it a uh, unheated starting length of 20 millimeters so our chip is right here the wind is the air is blowing from this direction and this 20 millimeters is not heated then we have the chip which is heated all right we're gonna have the two scenarios right here let's start with this one Okay, first let's uh, give it a little bit of thought of what does it mean that maximum temperature on the chip cannot exceed 80 degrees Celsius. Now, for convection, the air blows this way, and this is our chip. Now, what's the profile of H, how it looks as, it, uh, as we progress on the chip? It's a flat plate, right? And the convection coefficient h is the highest at the leading edge right here and as we go further and further away it gets lower and lower and lower and so our highest temperature the 80 most likely will occur here at the trailing edge so if we would look for here an 80 at the leading edge then here we would definitely be we would be higher than 80 so we, we we have to make sure that here at the end we do not exceed 80 degrees celsius now let's think through uh, what kind of situation are we dealing with just so we can find our correct formulas heat transfer problem and in heat transfer we have three different scenarios conduction convection radiation we don't have radiation we don't have conduction we are dealing with a convection we are not inside a pipe or duct, so it's not internal flow, it's external flow. The chip, we are considering it as a flat plate, not a blunt body, so flat plate. Now, one important thing that they told us, uniform, uniform heat flux, that is this. So, we are not dealing with a constant surface temperature, the temperature on the chip surface changes as we go along its length now we're gonna have constant heat flux and we're gonna have laminar or turbulent well at this point we don't know so we're gonna have to go ahead and find out which one of these situations does it apply to us the reynolds number is gonna help us to determine are we dealing with a laminar or turbulent flow in the first case we're gonna consider just the chip by itself and our length is going to be the 10 millimeters. This is going to be our leading edge, and this will be the total length. Now, looking at this formula, we have the velocity, we have the length. We do not have the kinematic viscosity, so we're going to have to find that out. First, we need to remember that our critical Reynolds number is going to be 5 times 10 to the fifth, and then we need to know that our formulas based on from these categories they all gonna require us to get properties from tables based on the film temperature 
So that's what we found right here. This is my film temperature, which is the average of the surface and the air temperature, which is 24 plus 80 divided by 2. It's going to give me 52 degrees Celsius and convert it to Kelvin. I went to a table in the back of the book. Most textbooks have these tables. There it is. Kinematic viscosity 18.41 times 10 to the negative 6 meter square per second. Fill everything in and here's my Reynolds number. And we can see that we are dealing with laminar flow. Now we know exactly what kind of correlations are we going to be using to find what we need. So they want us to find the power, right? With, with our units needs to be watts. This is the same thing as right here, the heat rate, which is equal to the flux times the area. Now what kind of flux are we dealing with here? Is convection, right? On our chip we have air blowing over it and it's causing convection. The area of the chip we know, but flux we don't know. So we're going to have to go ahead and find it. Here it is. I wrote up the correlation, our formula for flux, for convection. Let's see. This one we know. This one we know. Our H we do not know. So we're going to need further to look up more formulas to find our H. Now, this is where it comes handy. This is what we determined here, because now we have to find a formula that will help us find our H. For constant flux and laminar flow, here it is, our Nusselt number with H, X, K and all this. Now, do we have everything or not? Let's see. Uh, H, that's what we are looking for. So I'm going to mark it as question mark. Our length, we know. Our K, we don't know, but we're going to have to find it in tables. Uh, Reynolds number, we found it. Prompton number, we need to find it in tables. So this one and this one, we're going to have to go to tables and find them. Here they are. Our K and our Prompton number. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to solve for my H. Right here. We're going to use only these two sides of the equation. Since we know everything, we can go ahead and plug it in and find our H value of 118 watts per meter square Kelvin. Now that we found our H, we can go back to this formula right here. Right here, this one. And find our flux and then go back here and find our Q. Let's plug in. We have 118, 80 minus 24 Kelvin, and we have a flux of 6,630. Now we're going to use this formula and go back and find our Q, plug it in with our area of the chip, which is 10 millimeters times 10 millimeters, convert it to meters, and we can find that our Q is 0.66 what this is the maximum power that we can allow to enter that chip or otherwise it will overheat and uh, the, the 80 degrees celsius it will be exceeded now let's go to our second scenario where we're going to be dealing with an unheated starting length this still applies we still have a constant flux and we have a flat plate so let's find out if this longer setup is it still laminar or turbulent so we're going to take a look at our Reynolds number there it is we plugged in our uh, velocity our length be careful it changed now we're gonna include the entire length on heated length and the chip so that's 30 millimeters 0 0.030 meters plug in our uh, kinematic viscosity and we find a 32,590 Reynolds number which is still a laminar so we're good we're still in laminar flow now we're looking for Q in this case the same way as we were looking here so this formula right here we are gonna be able to use and 
again it's convection so this formula we're gonna be able to use but we have an unheated starting length so our H correlation will have to come from a different one because we cannot use this one right here this is the formula for our special case with the unheated starting length we can write it up for the nozzle number we have our H and let's see here we have a nozzle number up here marked with X slash the unheated starting length equals zero so this means that we're gonna have to use the correlation like we wouldn't have a starting length which would be this one right here this correlation means that it needs to come up here on top of it now at the bottom we know everything here we know everything so we can go ahead and uh, plug this into here and then solve for our h here it is this everything is the same i just replaced the nozzle number here with the correct correlation that comes from here it's just simply the nozzle number that you would use if you would not have the unheated length on the bottom everything stays the same then i'm gonna go ahead solve for h here it is Now if we check, we have every single uh, component of it, so we can go ahead, plug them in. Remember your Reynolds number is the one we found for this scenario with the uh, unheated length, so it's 32,590, and your length is the 30 millimeter, includes the unheated length and the chip's length, okay? Then we can go ahead and calculate it and find that our H is smaller than one we found here. We found 118. Here we found 107. And this kind of verifies exactly what we were saying in the beginning. The further away we are from our leading edge, our H will be smaller and smaller. See, over here we were only 10 millimeters from the leading edge. H was 118 we got a little bit further 30 millimeters here we all it's already dropped down to 107 now let's continue we need to solve for our flux just like we did here and then find our q values here's our flux we plug in the h we found right here our temperatures there it is 6013 and go ahead to q our power plug everything in our area stays the same it's 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters the same chip area that we had in the first one and we can find a power of 0.60 watts right here let me box it up 